Hey guys, this is our first um, biology lecture. Uh, it's going to be on evolution, it will be ongoing, and I guess we'll start from the beginning. Uh, this will be part one. Uh, the way our lectures are going to be working is be we're going to have a, uh, sorry, our class is going to be working, we're going to have um, video lectures followed by uh, an assignment in a packet that looks like this. Uh, so you'll see that these, when you uh, get these packets, you'll see that there are questions in here. You read them, you answer them. It's pretty much going to be based on our lecture. And along with our lecture, you're also going to be getting our lecture outline. So you, what you should do is right before the start of every lecture, you should print out your uh, a lecture outline. And we're going to go uh, step by step on um, what we're going to be talking about during today's lecture. All right, so let's get started. Uh, today's lecture, as you know, is going to be an evolution. Uh, for some of some of my classes, we've started this already. So for some of you, this the first few minutes of this will be pretty much a review. All right, so number one, evolution is the process by which species change over time to adapt to their environment. That's exactly what evolution is. It's not um, about monkeys. It's not about anything else but how ev um, organisms are able to um, should be able to adapt to their environment ever-changing environment if organisms can't adapt to their environment well they'll go extinct so therefore the fact that we still have organisms out there today means that organisms must have been able to um, evolve to adapt to their environment so the idea of evolution was actually brought about by number two Charles Darwin he gathered evidence to support his theory during his five-year voyage on the um, Beagle, and what he what uh, during his voyage when the uh, boat would stop, he would get out, uh, gather specimen, uh, compare them, contrast them, um, dissection, you name it. What he did was he started um, analyzing the different species to try to see the idea behind. There's anything beyond his idea of evolution. Well, one of the things he studied was number three fossils. With fossils, biologists could actually track the how organisms change over time. Well, what, what are fossils? Fossils are remnants or remains of, of um, species, of, sorry, of organisms from the past. So if you were to take the fossils of the past and then other fossils and then till the, what do you call, till um, organisms of the present, you could somehow make a, um, an estimate of how they change over time. Number four, beaks of finches. Darwin on his trip to the Galapagos Island actually made a huge discovery. Beaks of finches was his breakthrough. Uh, he realized that finches from each one of the islands were identical in body structure uh, except for the beaks. Um, so each finch had beaks perfectly suited for their habitat's food. So for example, um, be, um, finches with that uh, large beaks ate pretty much large, uh, large um, um, uh, with seeds, whereas ones with um, slim beaks were uh, they ate insects and so on and so forth. So he concluded that each finch descended from one ancestral finch from South America, and which then migrated to the islands, and then um, they were isolated, and each one of these finches were. Uh, evolved to, their, to adapt to their environment and over time, as when um, Darwin um, sees, uh, sees them now, they're all different. Uh, they're, all, they're all the same except for the, um, the uh, beaks of finch. All right, so let's take a look at this wheel of finches. Um, so you'll see here that these are the different types of finches and this is the type of um, bills they have. You have uh, edge crushing, biting the tips, Pro, um, and probing, and then uh, crushing beaks, grasping, and probing. So, and how do we how do we read this? For example, let's take a look at the medium ground finch. Uh, there he goes. It has an edge crushing. The bill is a crushing bill, and it eats mainly um, plant-based food. Whereas, <clears throat> for example, a, a small tree finch right there, it's got the beaks for biting, grasping. And it eats mainly animals, um, animal type foods, like most likely probably insects, you know, maybe worms. I don't know. It depends. All right. So these are your 
I guess finch that only means plant-based food. These are your finch that eats um, animal-based foods. And you have one finch right here, the warbler finch, which actually could do both. I could eat um, plant-based um, plant food or animal-based food at the same time. Okay? All right. <clears throat> which brings us to selective breeding. What is selective breeding? Well, Darwin was actually an avid... Um, uh, pigeon breeder. Uh, so while uh, breeding pigeons, he realized that, well, human beings have been breeding animals for centuries. What they would do is they would take a desirable trait, breed it with another with the same desirable trait, and the result is offspring that would have the desired trait. For example, if you want to breed um, race horses, you're not going to take slow horses or random horses. You'd pick the fastest horses you could find, breed them with each other, when they have offspring, select those who are the fastest, breed them with other fast horses. And you do this, if you do this enough times for centuries and over many generations, you realize that um, you're going to come up with um, uh, what it calls the, um, horses that are very fast. Obviously, they will look nothing like what they were before. They will be leaner. They'll be, you know, they'll have um, more stamina, bigger lung capacity. Not a, I'm not a racehorse guy, but you get the idea, right? Their body types will definitely change. Uh, so, um, again, you could you could do this with everything, dog breeding, right? When you look at the dogs, how look how different they are, uh, because over many centuries of breeding them, uh, you get the dogs to change in different different types. You could have your massive dog, you could have your your chihuahuas, and so on and so forth. So, um, Darwin had stated that, well, if human beings could artificially select traits that they want to pass on and not and cancel out the ones that don't pa uh, pass on, to, if you keep doing that, you get um, organisms to change. Well, according to um, Darwin, nature could also select um, traits, which brings us to this idea of natural selection. Six. Natural selection is the process. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's really the process by which individuals that are better adapted to their environment survive and reproduce more successfully than less, adapt, less adapted individuals do. Now, over time, these traits improve survivability, that improved survivability will become more common, causing species to evolve to adapt to their environment. And it's a slow process. Obviously, it takes many generations. Um, I think in class we use the um, we use the flying squirrel as the example, which there are millions. Um, flying squirrels, you know, um, evolved from the regular squirrels, except that these guys were able have evolved to have um, little gliders that enabled them to jump from tree to tree. All right, so um, now this took a long time, and then we explained in class how <clears throat> over time um, spe uh, the um, Squirrels are able to jump the furthest or were able to survive where the others don't. And it just so happens that squirrels that were able to jump the furthest had these gliding wings, well, small ones anyway, and over time progressed to bigger and bigger wings. So there are um, keys to natural selection. Overproduction is the first point. A, it means overproduction is that each species produces more offsprings that can survive. For example, a sea turtle will lay up to 110 eggs. Now, um, but only a small fraction of those eggs that are they're hatched will survive. They're, many of them will get eaten by predators. Many of them will, even if they do make it to the ocean as they're scrambling from the beach to get to the ocean, so they'll get picked off by fish, birds, you name it, all right? Only a very small amount of them will make it to adulthood to breed. B, struggle for survival. Over, overproduction actually causes um, members of each species to compete with one another. They'll make so much offspring that only the ones that have a particular trait that enables them to survive better will survive. We call this fitness. All right, each um, the more the fittest, the fitter the organism, though, if it has traits that allow it to survive, it will survive. So therefore, only the fittest can survive to reach adulthood and breed to pass on those traits. For the most part. Um, organisms that don't have that have um, traits that don't allow them to survive will die so that you know that particular trait gets cut off only the successful traits gets pushed on and pushed on and moved on to the next to the next round of generate the next generation of offspring and so on and so forth C variation 
genetic variation exists within every population. It is one of the most key thing regarding natural selection. Gen genetic variation creates different traits in a population. All right. If there was no genetic variation, every single organism would look identical. But the fact is they don't. Uh, even with human population, for example, we're all genetically different. The reason why is because we, we have many different traits because we have genetic variation. It's the same for almost every single organism on planet Earth. Believe it or not, even asexually reproducing organisms, because they do have mutations that occur here and there <clears throat> that, allow, that give them variations, albeit smaller than uh, successful repro sexually reproducing organisms. And finally, D, adaptation. Traits that improve the survival and reproduction will become more common within the population. So over time, as traits that are um, the traits that are help you survive get pushed forward to the next generation and the traits that don't gets weeded out over time the, um, these traits will be more common and the traits that don't help you will be less common all right for example we spoke about the beetle uh, you have the dark co the dark colored beetles versus the light colored beetles the dark co darker colored be beetles moved on and the lighter colored beetles um, died out as a result over many generations there are less and less lighter colored beetles, and the darker beetles become the more dominant trait. Finally, speciation. Speciation is the evolutionary process by which populations evolve to become distinct species. What do I mean by that? Well, over time, if, two, um, if a, a, a species break, break up into two groups, what ends up happening is that um, if these two groups were to be isolated and they can't inter, uh, interbreed, over time, they will adapt to their environment and they will become different species, all right? The longer the separation, the more different the species becomes. Now, according to Darwin, the Galapagos Island um, finches underwent speciation. They were separated for a very long time by their environment. Um, and then they adapted to that environment and they became different species over time. Now, when you put them together, they don't... Um, they will not um, interbreed because they're different species. So, which brings us to cladograms. Cladograms are a diagram. Uh, so, it kind of looks like this. And uh, we're going to move on to, uh, I'm going to stop here. We're going to talk about cladograms in the next part of our segment. Um, so, right now, what you're going to be doing is um, you're going to be looking at your packet. I will tell you exactly uh, what questions you need to answer. And uh, we're going to continue on with cladograms um, tomorrow. Okay, bye guys. <laughs>